Hi, and welcome to today's episode. I am so excited about this Pitsy Pod, and I know that I always say how excited I am about all these episodes, but this one's really special. You might not have heard of this yet, but I hope to help you understand what this tradition involves for many Canadians and many countries around the world. These Pitsy Pod episodes are small episodes, and they're meant to briefly explain a topic. So if you're interested, you can always find out more. I do post some reference links in the blog posts, and these contain different articles and sometimes websites that can direct your research. I'm Rosie. I'm a Francophone from Canada, and this is my podcast. I guess now we move into some history, eh? So what exactly is Tartan Day? It sounds kind of funny, doesn't it? Well, Tartan Day is a celebration of Scottish heritage. And this day is to recognize the contributions to our country by the more than 4 million Canadians who have Scottish ancestry. So when is it? Well, as you know, it's today. So April 6th every year. And why is it today? Why did they not pick another date? Today, 700 years ago, in 1320, was actually the date on which the Declaration of Arbroath was signed in Scotland. And you might not be aware of what this declaration is. So essentially, in 1320 when this was signed, Scotland became free of control by England's Norman kings and they had the right to use their military action to defend themselves when they were attacked. So it's a type of independence. One of the most famous parts of the declaration, quote, But if our king were to abandon the cause by being ready to make us or our kingdom subject to the king of England or to the English, we should at once do our utmost to expel him as our enemy and the betrayer of his own rights and ours, and should choose some other man to be our king who would be ready to defend us. For so long as a hundred of us shall remain alive, we are resolved not to submit to the domination of the English. It is not for glory, wealth, or honor that we are fighting, but for freedom and freedom only, which no true man ever surrenders except with his life. As you see, those are very bold words. But since that time, Scotland has been a sovereign nation. Now you might be thinking, okay, April 6th, the declaration was signed. But how did it start in Canada? We actually have to backtrack a tiny bit before it actually started in Canada. So let's look at the tartan. Now, you might have heard of tartan, which is that woolen fabric woven to look either checkered or striped, which can be more of a plaid. And they're often known as the symbol of Scotland, and they're worn very proudly in Canada by the members of its diaspora. So the official tartan of Canada, which is known as the maple leaf tartan, was designed in 1964 by the Toronto garment maker David Weiser before Canada's centennial celebrations of 1967. The tartan colors are green, red, and gold, and they were designed to represent the colors of the maple and other trees in Canada's boreal forest. You might have seen some pictures, and the colors of the maple leaf changes throughout the seasons. For example, the green represents the summer foliage, the gold appears in the early autumn, the red comes out with the first frost, and then the brown tones in the tartan represent the fallen leaves. This tartan has actually become an official symbol of Canada and it joins other significant emblems such as the coat of arms or the national flag of Canada. So now knowing this, we can look ahead at how Tartan Day actually started. On March 9th in 1986, at the Federation of Scottish Clans in Nova Scotia, there was a petition brought forward by members Bill Crowell and Jean McCarricher Watson and they asked, quote, that we establish a day known as Tartan Day. This is to be a day chosen to promote Scottish heritage by the most visible means. The wearing of Scottish attire, especially in places where the kilt is not ordinarily worn, for example, at work, play, or worship. After this 1986 petition, Nova Scotia proclaimed it officially in 1987. The next province to adopt this was in Ontario, and that was in 1991. And if we look at the next provinces in the following order, we see that it was officially adopted within 10 years, except for Quebec. So British Columbia was the 25th of March, 1992. Prince Edward Island was the 2nd of April, 1992. 
Saskatchewan was the 6th of April, 1992. Manitoba followed with the 6th of April, 1992. Alberta, also the 6th of April, 1992. And New Brunswick, the 6th of April the following year in 1993. And two years later, Newfoundland and Labrador was the 6th of April, 1995. Quebec adopted the Tartan Day, the 18th of December, 2003. And finally, it was officially declared a National Day Across Canada by the Federal Heritage Minister on October 21, 2010. The Honourable James Moore, who was the Minister of Canadian Heritage and Official Languages, announced that, quote, A tartan represents a clan, a family, and a community, and is an enduring symbol of Scotland that is cherished by Canadians of Scottish ancestry. Many Canadian provinces and other countries already celebrate Tartan Day as well, through Tartan Day, Canadians will have an opportunity to learn more about the various cultures that comprise Canadian society. Tartan Day is just an observance and it's not a national holiday. Looking at his words, we can actually understand a little bit of the impact that the Scots had on the development of Canada. There are some who say that Prince Henry Sinclair sailed from the Orkney Islands and landed in what is now Nova Scotia on the coast of New England in 1398. Some believe that there were Scottish sailors that accompanied the Vikings who landed in Newfoundland at the turn of the century, around the year 1000. Much of our early history in Canada involves fur trading. There are records of Scots that prospered in the Northwest Company of fur traders that were based in Montreal. They helped establish the trade routes and they explored the vast country and they met with the indigenous peoples that were living in the land. The Scots also helped build Montreal by establishing banks and insurance companies, as well as educational institutions, and they were also known in the clergy, law, medicine. They had politicians, educators, tradesmen, farmers. Looking at the tragedy of the Culloden Battlefield in 1746, Many of the Highland Scots emigrated to countries around the world, and they came in vast numbers to the East Coast, such as New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island, Nova Scotia, and even into Eastern Ontario by the late 18th and early 19th century. It is also recorded that the Fraser Highlanders represented a large contingent troop in the British Army under General James Wolfe, and the 78th Fraser Highlanders were raised in Scotland in 1757 to fight for the British against France during the Seven Year War, which was from 1757 to 1763. In 1763, when the regiment was disbanded, many Scots stayed in Canada and they married French Canadian women, they settled in this new country, and had many descendants. So there are quite a few French Scottish descendants in Canada. Looking at other countries, we also know that Tartan Day is celebrated. In 1997, Tartan Day was observed on a national platform and the resolution was proclaimed April 6th in the U.S. Congressional Record the following day. Over the years, National Tartan Day gained much awareness and there have been celebrations across the United States. One of the biggest celebrations that is well known is the parade on 6th Avenue in New York. The first one was held in 2002, and the mayor at the time, Michael Bloomberg, had the Scottish Sir Sean Connery leading the parade. It was packed, and National Tartan Day has become very popular over the years. So popular, actually, it became Tartan Week, or some people might call it Scotland Week. I don't blame them. One day just does not seem enough to celebrate all the lovely Scottish things we have in North America. And another celebration that is quite popular in New York is the Scotland Run. It's a 10k race around Central Park and people are running to the sound of bagpipes and just being cheered on by large crowds. Not long after North America adopted Tartan Day, in 2004, the Council of Angus decided to also celebrate Scottish Tartan Day in Scotland. They decided that Arbroath Abbey, where that famous declaration of Arbroath was signed, would be the perfect stage for Tartan Day in Scotland. And what they did is they reenacted that signature from the year 1320 as the centerpiece of the festival. 
Aberdeen in Scotland held its first tartan day the same year in 2004. What was a little surprising to me was that Argentina also celebrates Tartan Day on April 6th. Argentina has around 100,000 people that are of Scottish descent, and that is the biggest community outside of the English-speaking world. So their Tartan Day parade is called Porteños, and it started in Buenos Aires on April 6th in 2006. Every year, the Scottish Argentine Society organizes events, and one of them is by using a key to symbolize the opening of Arbroath Abbey Gate. And when we look at more international countries, we have Tartan Day in Australia and New Zealand, but it is celebrated more locally on July 1st. Their celebration on July 1st is because they want to celebrate the anniversary of the Repeal Proclamation of 1782. That repeal was directly linked to the Act of Proscription of 1747. That act had initially said that wearing tartan was a punishable offense that included up to seven years' transportation. So, if you're in Australia or New Zealand, you can celebrate on July 1st if you don't want to celebrate today. And coming back to Canada, in our capital city of Ottawa, there's an annual gathering of the clans which takes place April 6th or the Sunday nearest to April 6th. This takes place on Parliament Hill at noon. There are bagpipes, drums, and the dancing is hosted by the Sons of Scotland Pipe Band. The Sons of Scotland Pipe Band is Canada's oldest civilian pipe band. And by 2011, the celebrations also included our official tartan, the maple leaf tartan. I hope today you get to enjoy tartan day. I know for us, we're going to be cooking some shortbread. And I will likely wrap myself up in my maple tartan and listen to some lovely Gaelic music. What a beautiful time to celebrate the lovely culture. If you have something planned for today, let me know. I absolutely want to hear about it. Thanks, and happy Tartan Day!